the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Hi, welcome to the Educate Podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm getting the thumbs up. Two thumbs up. It was oh. a, a second attempt at the intro this morning. Lizzie um, <laughs> was going she to crossed intro. The line, didn't she, she No, she didn't. <laughs> but it, understandably, uh, Lizzie is going to drive the podcast today because we are back educating you. Me or both? I of guess us. all of us. Yeah, right? here, here with Lizzie and with Jess. Um, and what are we talking about today? What we're going to talk about today is a topic very close to my heart, and I think it will be to yours too. Sorry, Taylor Jess. Swift. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> we're back. No, um, uh, I don't know if it'll be so much for you, Jess. Yeah, but we can all relate. It's all we're all included here. So we're going to talk about eldest daughter syndrome, and oh. so. The article that I had a look at is cleverly titled, Are You Okay or Are You an Eldest Daughter? And I just was like, "I'm yeah, I'm an oh. eldest daughter and I'm not okay. Oh, meaning, yeah, you're yeah. not okay if you're an no. eldest daughter. You have, you obviously have an older sister, though, Jess. I do, yes. I do. But I Jess sit the middle. firmly in the middle, which I think is quite That's evident. That's obvious. By the, so we <laughs> don't need you for this episode. Just yelling, look at me, <laughs> all the time. Do, is it why? Has the eldest daughter syndrome or chat been floating around a bit of late? Yeah, so someone, some person on Twitter or X or whatever we call it now just tweeted, um, are you happy or are you the oldest sibling and also a girl? Just some random girl on the internet mm. tweeted it and it went viral. It, ga- it, uh, it gathered over a million replies. It's still going. People are still adding to the thread. And so then it kind of became a discussion that then psychologists were jumping in on. People were putting it in articles and things like that. Yeah, it just got a life of tweet. its own, didn't yeah. it? Because even my nine-year-old daughter, seriously, who is an only child, who mm. we laugh is the eldest, the middle child and the youngest. <laughs> yeah. But she, in bed the other night, she randomly, and I don't know if they were talking about it at school in, yeah. in year four, she started asking me how I felt being the oldest of the four kids in my family and then started talking about her dad, who is the middle child of five boys, which comes with its complexities as well. Um, So it just feels like uh, as far as waves of topics go, where you sit in a family hierarchy is, is, is top of the list. Yeah. And so actually... That that kind of that idea kind of came around in the 1900s from an Austrian psychotherapist, mm. Alfred Adler, um, and he coined something called the birth order theory. So that you know, proposing that the order in which children are born has a profound impact on their personalities, yeah. their mental health, everything as they grow up. So he thinks, and we can go around and see if we relate. So firstborns, Kate, you and I, mm. that we tend to be neurotic conservative, dutiful and anxious and perfectionist. Hmm. Do you feel like that relates? I think I'm just trying to tick all of the things I've been diagnosed with. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know if I'm you, conservative. The, uh, I, well, I am. Yeah. In your, maybe in your decision making. Is that where oh, it would be? Yeah. Careful. Not in your politics, Lizzie, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm, de- I'm definitely uh conservative yeah. and yeah. Dutif- uh, dutiful, mm-hmm. kind of looking after others and making sure that everything's okay to, from from actually it must start when you're very young because I know mum my mum always tells this story about when um we were very young and I would have only just been talking and if my youngest sister oh my the sister under me and my brother who were ch- children two and three they were in bed and we mm. had a visitor knock at the door I would go to the door as like the five year old and say, Shh, the kids are sleeping. Oh, oh wow. wow. And that's even as a kid. So even then, not that mum and dad did anything differently, but uh, uh, being the oldest of the kids in the yep. house, there's something it's like, like you're, a re- you're a thrown sen- into that role. Well, a sense of responsibility yeah. or yeah. something like, Oh, there's a now there's a baby being born under me. Yep. I'm now in mum's category, yes. not the child. And you know what's so interesting from a little bit of digging I I did that this whole kind of birth order thing it actually all has a lot to do with the pregnancy hormones when you're in your mother's tummy and then um it's called what's it called um adrenal puberty that you go through Mm. so it's what happens when your mum is pregnant if she had a stressful pregnancy if she smoked if she was using medications alcohol all that kind of Mm. stuff what their depression and anxiety were like and then they measure they measure those adrenal um like 
cortisol levels again when you're going through puberty. And they, it was found that the eldest girls matured the fastest when their mothers experienced higher levels of prenatal stress. So it all kind of goes back to right when you're in the womb. But I also... I b- truly believe that Just stuff. as I thought, we can blame them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another reason to blame But isn't our it mothers. so interesting? Like, you know, apart from all the science of it, I do really think, and as the internet seems to think, there's over 7.8 million videos on this topic on TikTok alone. So many daughters, eldest daughters, are coming out and saying, you know, it's feel it's like being in an unpaid internship for the rest of your life. <laughs> I have post traumatic eldest daughter disorder. Were you a pleasure to have in class, or were you just the bossy eldest daughter with an undiagnosed anxiety disorder? Well, can you okay, guys walk well, me through? Because I'm got sitting a- here, and this obviously doesn't really resonate with me because I'm in the middle. What, like, what is the what's the struggle you're carrying? Like, what is it? What I think do you maybe, feel? Well, you know what? There are lots of wonderful things about being the older sister as well. But I think that. Oh no, no! Lizzie's shaking her head. No, See, I'm, I'm an older l- sister because I'm in the middle. My little sister, I love so being an much. older sister. No, I, I love, love being it. an older sister more than I like being a younger sister. To be honest. Oh, do you? Interesting. Mm. Because people listen to you more. No, I just feel like I, I can offer more to her because I can teach her things that I've learnt or things I've done or guide her a little bit because she's just a few years behind me. Yeah. Whereas with my older sister, I'm like kind of thinking, oh, I'm kind of set. I don't really need that guidance from you. Yet I like to give it. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think, okay, this this is an example of the oldest child. Maybe you're the oldest daughter. (laughs) Mm -hmm. When I was younger, we would do Christmas uh, concerts at Christmas, of course. Uh, We would use our dancing costumes from the classes we did. We would, um, and when I say we, (laughs) I mean I would organise the dancing routines and everything in the backyard and we would perform where I grew up in Campbelltown with the side of the Fibro garage as our backdrop. Awesome. Um, And after a couple of years I'm I'm like only eight nine or ten after a couple of years I realized that sometimes my brothers and sisters there were three of them one one brother two sisters sometimes they wouldn't do exactly what I told them to do or would halfway through our rehearsal process in the lead up to the performance would decide that they'd had enough (laughs) and so one year and then for consecutive years after that I thought, you know how I get to get my, you know, my the younger sister at this point, she's like two or something. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I made them do? Before we started rehearsals and I started choreographing the dances, I made them sign contracts. No. I, this is classic eldest daughter vibes. Yeah, I will do. I think I'd started Home and Away by then so I knew what a contract was and it made me turn up to work. So... If my sister Rebecca was going to have a tantrum and say, you're being a bossy sister, I'm not going to do this anymore, I could say, well, you signed a contract. Well, too bad. And yeah. how many of your siblings did you end up suing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh do you, so that's you, that is a, a perfect example. That is wow. literally of, yeah. couldn't be more perfect. That's perfect. Okay, yeah. that makes sense now. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. But if we get a bit deep into it, you know, it all goes back to, you know, patriarchal value like we're not talking about oldest boy syndrome are we because as a girl you kind of the family you know there's another there was another tweet that I saw that um that said firstborn daughters are the men of the household and no one can convince me otherwise and I think that's so true you get lent on so much Mm. and I feel like it's all done very subconsciously like they just almost expect you to take care of the younger siblings or you know you're the first one that goes, you go through puberty first, you go through everything first, and so you're held to this sort of impossible standard. Yeah. And being a girl is hard enough, let alone a girl and an eldest daughter. And what you realise is you know? that being being the eldest daughter and going through things first, it's tough on you, but it's also, at that point, it's tough for your parents as well because mm. being the first child, they haven't done it before either. Yeah. So you, they might come down on you in a m- more strict Mm. Um, fashion, they might they might yeah. discipline you more as the eldest child, and I think sometimes that's where there's a bit of chat around the second child being able to get away with a bit more, yes. or testing the boundaries a bit more because the eldest child has paved the yes. way, and they the eldest child might like to keep. 
the yeah. pace, the pace a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My sister and I are a classic example of this. So yes. it's just my sister and I. But I was very anxious, very perfectionistic. Always followed the rules. Literally would line up my toys like by my bed one by one. That's probably you know another issue. But it was very like neat, tidy. And then my sister came along, dyed her hair pink, got tattoos at sixteen. Mm. Like, she's my best friend and the best person in the world. It's nice to see her out in silver water every so often. <laughs> but very different. But like, like, couldn't be more different. And, yeah. it's, and as um, back to the Austrian psychotherapist, yeah. they actually say, so the middle child, which is what you are, Yeah, Jess, tell me. Are competitive, rebellious and people pleasers because they're often overlooked and have to fight for the attention of their parents. I must say, in my family, I'm 100% the people pleaser because I'm in the middle. Really? I feel like I bridge the gap between people. Not that there's like huge arguments or anything, but I'm always the first one to talk someone off a ledge. Calm down. He meant this by saying that. Or why don't you do this, this and this? And I just... You mediate, do you? I'm absolutely the mediator, which I don't know was as true growing up. Because, you know, t- three sisters, two years apart each, lots of fighting in that house. But, like, yeah. now as adults, I feel like I'm very much like that. And yeah. I understand different types of people because of all the different players in my family. Yeah, yeah. It's only over the last couple of years, going back to what you were saying before, that I looked more into um, the state of your – or how – your time, how your time in the jungle, no, how your time in the womb yeah. was and how that does affect you. So what yeah. you're and, – and I guess in the past we've always thought about things like um, – and no judgment at all, but you, you know, like how whether your mum was a clean living mum, mm-hmm. and how you know what your put what the mothers are putting into their body to kind of create the child. Yeah. But we didn't think much about the emotional, yeah, the emotional mm. journey that a yeah. mother um, was going on. And I even know um, with me, I am the eldest child, but before I was born, my mother lost three children before me oh. all, all boys mm. oh, and so when now that I've spoken to my mum a bit more about her journey of pregnancy with me yeah. is that and it makes complete sense she you've lost three children yeah you're pregnant with another child you actually don't know if child number four is going to be okay. So the the nervous energy, mm. the cortisol a, the levels. anxiety, the the cortisol. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's a. I think there's oh, there would 100. be. A, I know for me, if I'd been going through that, I would have been incredibly panicked that the daughter that arrived was going to be okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. and I guess I've yeah. That's why well, it turned out. I'm so okay. sorry that happened to your oh, mother. Oh, I know. Well, and you, these are the things that you only start to understand a bit more. Yeah. The older you you get, yep. I always knew that there were children that came before I did, yep. and that mum and dad both went through that. But um, without having your own children or without having life experience, you don't you don't really understand. Do you know what? That's sure. so interesting to say because. We had Harry nine months ago, and before that, I never thought of my parents as my parents when I was a baby. And it wasn't until I was talking about having Harry, and he was like really little. And mum said, Oh, when I used to feed you, I would just sit there and look at you for hours. And I thought, I've never thought of my mum like sitting yeah. there and feeding me. And that, that like, 30, 30 I know years you mean. ago, I know. Yeah. do you know what I mean? But I'm yeah. like, That's what we do with our son. So I'm like, she had so much love in that moment for me, but you don't even think about it. You just yeah. and like that's. I think it comes back to like now, still realizing parents have their own lives. Well, parents are, yeah. are human beings, as are, as are we. And I just don't think you ever think of your parents, parents' life before no. you were born. Like, oh, they actually did all these things. Yeah. And then now having a baby, I'm like, but I have a life and I have a baby. I'm like, so that's what my yeah. parents had. They had a life and they had that us didn't as kids, involve you, but yeah. we didn't. We didn't ever register that they weren't anything other than just our parents. So it's quite interesting to have the hindsight now. None of us here are younger siblings, but for anyone listening who's the younger sibling... Your goodness, don't leave them out. No, God. Well, they'll let you know about it. (laughs) They tend to be very creative, attention-seeking, fiercely independent and a bit defiant, which... I can safely say it for my beautiful little sister. I love all those things about her, but she is 100% all of those things. Defiant? Is that oh, a bit yeah. like kind of stomping the feet? Oh, yeah. She thinks I'm stubborn. I'm like, have you met yourself, mate? Okay. Yeah, my little sister's stubborn too. Yeah. My little sister. 
I was telling Lizzie this the other day. She's so friends. She's so. <laughs> we are friends. Oh, is this you texting on the weekend? Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm so happy for house, you. Kate, so we're friends as well. Um, <laughs> I was telling her that my little sister's like so lovely and kind and friendly, but she just has a social limit. So she'll go, all right, I'm bored of this. I'm going home. And uh, she'll just I leave the it. situation. Go, yeah, you do you. Well, I that's love nice that. and clear. Yeah. I guess so. All right, guys, um, taking a leap out of her book. Bye. I am out of here. I know I'm off to do something responsible. (laughs) You're off to make your siblings sign another contract. (laughs) Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.